There are two kinds of neurons located in the spinal column. And just to review from the end of the last video, these are interneurons and motor neurons. So again, information travels from the motor cortex. The neurons in the motor cortex, their axons travel down and they split into one of two cortical spinal tracts and they travel down the brainstem and they end at various regions of the spinal cord as a function of where the muscles are in the environment. At the point that they end in the spinal cord, they are then linking up with motor neurons. And there's two kinds of motor neurons. There's interneurons, which project to motor neurons, and then there's motor neurons, which project to the muscles of the body. So motor neurons are located laterally, and they project to the muscles that control the fingers and hands. Immediately located motor neurons project to the muscles that control the arms and the shoulders, and the most medially located motor neurons project to muscles that control the trunk. And so here's how this organization occurs here. So here is a section of the spinal cord. So you can imagine that uh, information is going to come down from the motor cortex and it's going to stop here, um, at which point it's going to say, okay, I need to send this information to the muscles. And so it'll connect with each of these interneurons and these interneurons then project to these motor neurons. And this organization then reflects to where the information goes. The most medial projects out to the trunk and the most lateral projects out to the muscles of the body. Okay, and you can see this organization right here. So these most medial is to the trunk, the, then next would be the shoulders, because of course this is the closest part of the body, your, your trunk, and then the next closest medial portion is your shoulders and then it moves out to your arms, and then uh, again further up your arms, and then finally this l most lateral section of your spinal cord projects out to your fingers. So it follows a basic organization from being uh, the most medial, closest to your body, to the most lateral, the furthest from your body. So once this information is sent down the spinal cord and it connects with the interneurons and then the motor neurons, then these motor neurons are going to connect with muscles. We have two types of muscles that are involved in movement. We have extensor muscles and then we have flexor muscles. Extensor muscles, these move or extend the limb away from the trunk. So again, the sort of E for exit, just like efferent is for exit, leaving the body. And then we have flexor muscles with mo which move the limb toward the trunk. So the connections between interneurons and motor neurons ensure that the muscles work together so that when one muscle contracts, the other relaxes. And here is an overarching example of this passage of information. Okay, so the information is sent down from the brain down the spinal cord, and here, right about where the shoulder is, then the connections from the motor neurons will end, and they'll link up with the interneurons, which then connect with the motor neurons. And the motor neurons will send this information to the muscles here. So the extensor motor neurons and flexor motor neurons project to the muscles. And then you have these two muscles. So the tricep is an extensor mu muscle, which moves the arm away from the body. And the bicep is a flexor muscle, which moves the lower arm toward the body. And acetylcholine is the neurotransmitter at the neuromuscular junction. So it's involved, it's, the acetylcholine is involved in both of these. So uh, when you want to move the arm away from the body, then the tricep is activated, moving it away. If you want to move the arm towards the body, then it will send instructions to the motor neurons that then connect with the bicep flexor muscle to move the arm towards the body.